Bannock Day Earth Fulcher Road. What a beautiful day here in the rectory in Bunclody. And it is also the week, um, International Women's Day and leading up to Mothering Sunday, as well as Shocked in the Gaeliga. But it's, also, it's an opportunity just to think about our mothers, uh, also about the origin of the festival, which was to do with Mother Church and the cathedrals especially. And so the church has a role in nurturing and caring and that's an important role we need to uh, focus on. It's also a time in which we think in this beautiful uh, field of daffodils here in the rectory um, of uh, the earth and how the earth provides life and nurtures and especially these daffodils. There's an interesting element of the daffodil that only recently I, I was reminded of and that is the daffodil starts off with this brown, it's now a bit shriveled, but at the start when the daffodil is coming through the hard cold earth, um, really in winter really, uh, it, it needs strength in this um, outer skin, this tough skin, and this tough skin then um, dies back and shrivels and out comes the new daffodil that is so beautiful uh, and means so much to us around springtime. And so, where well, I go back to my book, um, the, the daffodil is something of a parable for us really in life because that uh, shriveled brown piece that we hardly ever notice when we look at a daffodil flower, that was an important part of the life of that flower. And it is, I suppose for us also a reminder that the tough times that we come through, um, they are still part of our life. Um, we don't lose them, uh, but we, we, we use them as a reminder and in a way that they continue to remind us that God gets us through these tough times and uh, we are able to, like the daffodil, hopefully, um, see brighter days ahead. And the daffodil itself, of course, in Irish, Lewis Crum Keen, it's a beautiful name and it means the flower of the bowed head. And it certainly reminds me of Jesus on the cross and in John Gospel, John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse 30, uh, we read that Jesus on the cross after accepting the sour vinegar bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And so the, the daffodil speaks to us in different ways as well as giving huge pleasure. And it is a beautiful, beautiful sight and sign of spring. But this Sunday coming, the theme of nurturing and our mothers and God as our ultimate uh, parent uh, comes out in the psalm, which is Psalm 34, uh, verses 11 to 20. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is there who delights in life and longs for days to enjoy good things? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and will save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the troubles of the righteous. From them all will the Lord deliver them. He keeps all their bones so that not one of them is broken. And so in that psalm, like, the righteous go through hard times, the brokenhearted, and the Lord is near to them. And so that's what, in my faith anyway, gets me through. It's the knowing that God is always there, who has gone through the tough times. 
he also bowed his head and gave up his spirit in the sure and hope, and hope that he would be raised again from the dead. And so we remember it at this time of, of Lent, uh, that that close relationship we have with God and with our, our mothers, whether they've gone to God themselves or whether they are still with us or in whatever way we feel nurtured in our community uh, by mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters in Christ, whoever it may be. And the wonderful thing in the commandments, which we read at Ash Wednesday and which are on page 222 in the Book of Common Prayer, is that the, the, the commandment to love your mother and father is uh, in Exodus, it's in Deuteronomy, but it's also in, in, in the letter to the Ephesians, um, chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. And it says in that um, part of Ephesians that it's the first commandment that carries with it a promise. That if we love our mother and father, then it will go well with us in the land. That we will, we will prosper. It will be good for us as well as being good for our mother and father, of course. And so as we honour and bless those whose care we have benefited from down the years and who continue to nurture us and continue to give care, um, we, we just remember that blessing from Numbers, uh, the book of Numbers, the, the, the blessing of Aaron, which is in Numbers 6, verse 22. And it's one which is very familiar, but rings true because it holds in it the promise of seeing the face of God, which is the promise that Jesus had on the cross. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us this Mothering Sunday coming and forevermore. Amen.